After our last hearing, President Trump tried to call a witness in our investigation, a witness you have not yet seen in these hearings. That person declined to answer or respond to President Trump's call and instead alerted their lawyer to the call. Their lawyer alerted us, and this committee has supplied that information to the Department of Justice. Let me say one more time, we will take any effort to influence witness testimony very seriously. Our chief White House correspondent, Caitlin Collins, is with me right now. Caitlin, uh, uh, this, is, this was really important and a very significant moment we just heard from the committee vice chair about this potential witness tampering. What are you, what are you hearing about yeah, this? Yeah, Liz Cheney really dangled that out there at the end, saying, you know, we've got this preview of what is going to happen in the next hearing. And also, here's one more thing that has happened since this last hearing. Of course, it immediately, immediately sent people in the former president's orbit scrambling to try to figure out who this witness could potentially be. Who is it that he tried to call? It's not immediately obvious. Wolf, obviously, there have been over a thousand witnesses interviewed by the January 6th committee. You've seen several of them appear on camera, so that rules them out. You know it's not those who have appeared since she said it is not. It is a witness you have not yet seen appear on camera or in person. But, of course, the big question is who is it? And, of course, you've seen people in Trump's orbit already pushing back on this, saying that Cheney is allowed to say these things with them going unchallenged or unconfirmed. There are so many witnesses that it could potentially be. But obviously, this person felt uncomfortable with the, the former president calling them to the point where they did not answer the phone. They instead phoned the January 6th committee and told them about this, who then in turn turned this over to the Justice Department. So there is still a lot to learn about this. And I think you do have to keep in mind the context of the former president who has been accused of verging on witness tampering before, whether it be Michael Cohen or some of his other former aides who have come under legal scrutiny. But I do think this is this is something that Liz Cheney put out there, and the committee is going to have a lot of questions about this. What more, if anything, can you tell us about this truly explosive revelation from the vice chair of the select committee, Liz Cheney, that former President Trump actually tried to call one of your witnesses? Do you have evidence, Congressman, to suggest Trump knew that person would be a witness? Well, what we know is what we've said from the very beginning, which is we take it very seriously when individuals reach out to potential witnesses for the January 6th committee. We're not going to let them be intimidated. We're going to keep pursuing our work. Uh, and in this case, as the vice chair detailed, uh, this individual handled it exactly how we would want them to handle it. Uh, we have turned that material over to the Department of Justice uh, that their lawyer gave to the committee. Uh, and we're just going to leave it at that. But clearly, we, we always back up what we say. I think we have a history of that. Uh, and I look forward uh, to next week's hearing. The, your committee chair, uh, uh, Congressman Benny Thompson, said just a little while ago he didn't know which witness actually received the call from Trump. So who on the committee does know the identity? All of the committee members uh, know the, the identity, but, but this is, more importantly, this is about making sure uh, that witnesses ha are free to come speak before us. If they uh, want to come talk to us, we have a tip line. Uh, we've taken uh, testimony uh, from individuals. Over a 1,000 people have been interviewed. Uh, we want to protect that ability for people to come forward, and that's exactly where we're at. So I just want to be clear, Congressman, you personally, you do know the identity of this potential witness who received this phone call from Trump. The members of the committee have been read in, um, but more importantly, uh, the topic of this issue is something that we feel is incredibly uh, important. Uh, and we want to make sure that everybody knows uh, we're not going to stand by and let witnesses uh, be intimidated. So you do know the name of the identity of this person? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, sir. All right, uh, we also heard directly from a rioter today saying he only marched to the U.S. Capitol after Trump urged all, them to, all of them to do so. But besides the former president's public comments, can you really say he was giving specific directives to these people? Well, that's what the testimony indicated. Uh, and as we've done throughout this entire process, we're just going to let the facts uh, go where they take us. 
Uh, and that's exactly what Mr. Ayers uh, told the committee and told the country, uh, is that he was disappointed um, and that this has ruined his life. Uh, and I thought it was incredibly powerful testimony. Wolf, this is someone who came down, uh, had been monitoring social media, felt that, that he, he owed it to the president to come uh, to the rally uh, and only went to the Capitol after the president pointed at the Capitol and talked about uh, uh, marching down to the Capitol. And, and as a result of following the president's advice, uh, this individual's life has been forever changed. Uh, and we appreciate his powerful testimony. It was, it was indeed very powerful. Your fellow committee member, Jamie Raskin, says, says, and I'm quoting him now, we have only shown what he calls a small fraction of what we have found. What exactly can we expect from next week's hearings and any potential hearings beyond that? Well, the plan is to have this hearing uh, next week. Uh, we look forward to sharing the next piece uh, of the information that we have learned. Uh, this uh, hearing will likely focus uh, on that time period. What was going on in and around the White House during this time? Uh, this hearing, we talked about domestic violent extremism in the period between the election certification on December 14th and January 6th. How did we get here? Well, that was another one of our mandates, um, but specifically this next hearing, we're going to summarize what we found and talk specifically about what was going on that day at the White House.